the way my parents raised me. I mean, I love them both. They really wanted to show us how much they love their faith. Something I really like about growing up in a good family is the opportunity to uh, really learn how to deal with uh, so many personalities. Every one of the siblings is very different. It really gives you an opportunity for a lot of experiences that a lot of other families really don't have, and it gives you another outlook on life. My mom and dad's influence on me, like in the Catholic faith, was pretty fundamental because it like kind of made me like want to be better and not do things that like any other person would think is okay um, and realize that like things are wrong for a reason and I shouldn't be doing them. Hi, my name is Ana Lucia Diaz Torres. I was born and raised in Mexico. Even though my, I, I grew up with, with my parents, they, they gave me the faith and when I went to college, I started um, having formation. I met people from uh, Opus Dei, and they invited me to some um, faith formation classes. And that was a point in my life that it opened my eyes to know everything about the Catholic faith. It was wonderful for me. They teach me how you can be a saint in the middle of the world doing whatever you do. For me, to be a, a saint or to be a people of faith was only for the nuns, for the priests, for the monks, but not for a regular person. But then when I met uh, Opus Dei, I was like, wow, so it is okay and it is good. I, I can be open to life. And, and that was very, I was very happy. So we were uh, classmates. I met her the first day of college. I remember that she was always joyful. She was always uh, full of joy and that always attracted to me. She always took care of her appearance in a way of like not trying to impress anybody or whatever. I mean, uh, in college and we were studying in Monterey, Mexico, it was extremely hot and she was always dressing very well. And I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's very nice. And you don't see that very often. So I, I prayed to the Lord that I, I needed a wife that is, uh, first of all, is, is, is Catholic and is close to the Lord and also to have virtues. And among the virtues I remember, because we all, one always relates to your own mother. And I remember my mom being compassionate. So like, I need somebody that is compassionate, that is that is hard worker because it's a lot of work, that is uh, fun to be around and that you can talk to and listens. And so uh, when I was praying to the Lord, I, her face and name always came to to my to my mind. And very soon I realized that that was through marriage, uh, that was uh, the way that the Lord was calling me to go to heaven and be closer to Him. So, okay, if that is the way, then just put me in front of the right person. And we got married in October 1999. When I met my husband, he was um, open to life because he is one of seven kids. I remember when we had our first talks, uh, I told him, no, I want, I want to have two or three, three or four kids. And he said, why so? And then when I received the formation and when we got married, I was completely convinced to have all the kids that God wants to, to send us. And yes, here, here we are. One thing 
that I believe is great is when you're doing what you believe that you need to be doing. And uh, it's always been an, an, a very powerful thought in my mind. Say, it's incredible how much power God gave us to procreate and have kids and bring a life uh, to this world. And just to have also the power to say no, it amazes me to say, how can you say no? How can you prevent or just neglect having another kid? Why? It's an entire life, the impact, all the good that that life will, will do. You're just like, no, because why? So that's always been very powerful to me and God has been like, put that thought in my head very clearly. So I love to say, okay, we were open and, and here we are on one side, like, kind of like the intellectual side of having a big family. On the human side, it's just incredible. There is always something going on and there is always something to be happy about. Um, my parents were always very Catholic. I feel like some people, like their parents never really cared, but my parents were very passionate about going to church and getting the sacraments given to us. I feel like my mom is a little more strict on the aspect on like what we wear to church, how we sit in church, how we do a bunch of other stuff in church and in the house of God. I believe that, that the best example of the faith that uh, our parents could have ever put on us is in the way that they behave themselves. They have always behaved in a way that really exemplifies what it means to, to be a saint in everyday life. They have never really visibly been upset at each other in front of us. and. Uh, I think that goes a long way. I've seen a lot of families where that's not the case. And seeing the effects that that has on the children really, really shows. And I think that in, in so many little ways, my parents have been saints. We try to live the faith. We also try to don for them, for the PT activities. If we're going to pray the rosary, we say, hey, kids, we are going to pray the rosary. Would you like to join us? If everybody wants to come, good, we, we pray. If somebody is not in a good mood, doesn't feel good or whatever, they don't want to come, we don't push them to do it. But we always invite them, just like like you saw with the with the angel. We say, hey, we're going to pray the angelos. Would you like to join us? And we, we pray it. So the same with, with all the other activities we do. The only one that we don't that we don't let them choose is like the the mandatory ones. Like we're going to mass, you want it or you don't want it, we're going. Mm -hmm. So, but with the other ones, it's like okay, Dad and I were going to pray. Would you like to join us? Okay, you're very welcome. We try to take them also regularly to confession. Yeah, we. I mean, we try to search for different places, even the parish, or we know some priests, and sometimes they. They, we just go wherever they are and go with the kids and hear some confessions. Provide them the, the means to, to have the, the sacraments and practicing with, with Arturo and I as a couple and inviting the kids. Yeah, we're big into kind of like a, the teach them or educate the will so that they want to do the things that they do. We don't just like ask them to do things. I mean, we, we believe it's super important for them to understand what they're doing and want to do the things. So that is, that it lasts and, and stay with them over the course of their life. It's not even really with a big family, but just with family in general. I feel like a lot of times, myself included, you can get lost in like being siblings and maybe not valuing your you know your relationship enough because you're, you're in your eyes you're just siblings. But if you really take the time to like get to know them and to appreciate them and to treat them with mutual respect, then you realize that like your siblings are honestly better than some of my friends, you know? So I would just say, you know, try harder to 
value the relationships you have with your siblings. Because even if I was in a family of 10, even, you know, the family that I'm with, which is a family of 10, or if I was in a family of two, you know, one thing I can say that I learned over the years was just to better value my relationship with my siblings, so. started it was that Mauricio, he, I think whenever he was like 14, he wanted a, an RC car and he was looking into the RC car industry. Some Christmas, he, he asked for an RC car and he, and he got one. And it was the Traxxas, and that's what really kicked off everything because then his friends got one and then everybody else just was amazed about how fast the RC cars could go because they'd never seen anything like it. And then that's whenever my dad got an idea of trying to open his own RC car business because he saw how much he was spending on all the individual parts and all the motors and, and everything to fix the RC car when it broke. And then the big kids were helping out in the shop until they had to go to college. So whenever they left, I had to fill in the shoes. So I started fixing all the cars and helping my dad around the shop. What I like the most is everything just to see all the activities that we do together as a family is very uh, joyful. I love to see the kids uh, interacting in between them. I love to see how they are very good friends in between them because um, something that, that uh, we are very thankful is that they have a very good relation in between all of them, I can tell you. Uh, yeah, sometimes some of them could be like very more uh, loves to 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 tease uh, other siblings or to be more uh, moleston <laughs> to bother <laughs> to bother other ones. But in general, they have a very good relation in between them. They we can see you can see how they love each other, how they help each other, and they are uh, very aware to see what is the needs of the of the yes. others and and they help each other every time they, they they can so that's great it feels very good it's VC all the time uh, sometimes it can get tiring, more for my wife than for me, but it's so good, it's fun. It's fun, it's a lot of fun. There's no time to get bored, that's for sure. And also for the kids, if one kid comes and say, Mama, somebody who don't want to play with me, go and ask for another one. You have nine people around there that someone will be willing to play with you, for sure. Yeah. And which is like a very good thing also, being a parent of a uh, big family, is it helps the parent to teach, or it makes it easier to teach virtues and values because they have to share, they have to be uh, compassionate, they have to listen to, this, to each other. So they learn, like just because of the environment, they learn and they practice many virtues, so that's very good. They have to be patient. They yeah, have yeah. to wait their turns. Mama cannot take care of all of them at the same time, so they have to take turns and wait for their turns so that they learn it, yeah. practicing, for sure. As well as also, as a parent, you always want to give them everything. And uh, when you have one or two, probably you can accomplish that. Or it's easier, let's say, to accomplish that with, a, with not as ma much money. But when you have a lot, a lot of kids, it's like you can you just cannot. So you, you can like the same, the same uh, dynamic force you to be more rational with uh, what you're gonna give them, and that's always good, you know, to live with some limitations and to learn to take care of the things and to share. To share also to share. as well. They have to share a lot. I've 
been kind of independent, um, to be honest. Um, so, I mean, going out on my own was, it just felt natural. And I think I got it from my dad because he also went out of the household when he was 18 to go to college. And he was the only one out of the seven kids um, to do it. And my mom as well, she went to college on her own. So it's kind of in the family, you know, but obviously the, the connection of the family is, is always there and it's very, very strong. So, you know, when I'm over there, I'm always uh, calling my parents, talking to my siblings, um, always, you know, coordinating things like, hey, when are you guys gonna come? Um, always trying to keep the, co the connection alive, even though we're not connecting as often, right? As if I were waking up every single day. Um, to be next to them. We're always still trying to to keep a connection alive. Um, and also, it makes you kind of appreciate, you know, the fact that we're not there as often. Because before that, you know, we were waking up, you know, we, we were breathing down each other's necks, right? <laughs> we were like um, living with each other all the time. Um, now it's, now that I'm away, it makes, the, it makes me appreciate a lot more, you know, being with my siblings and my family. Another thing that we do that we learn from another couple that has been extremely beneficial for us is that when they have an issue among them, we ask them to go outside and fix their problems they own. So that, that has helped us a lot to them to, for conflict resolution, as well as has helped us not to take parts for one side or the other or be biased by one or the other. So. Yeah, because you never know. Sometimes some, some of the kids come with you and say, hey, the, some sibling uh, did me this or that, but you never know what happened before. So instead of getting involved in the problem, we ask them to, to have a time out, the two involved of the three or any amount of kids. So they go outside or to an apart room and they have to talk. They have to, 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 to talk about the problem, what was the problem, so what is going to be the solution if they have to, to ask for forgiveness or something, they have to, both of them, apologize, apologize yeah. and they learn to speak the problems. And we really appreciate that, that tip from our friends. They did a very good job. I feel like they made us talk out our problems when we were younger a lot, and I feel like that helped us. And now I notice with like people that are my age that they don't have communication skills that well. And it really, I'm really blessed and happy that my parents taught me that when I was younger, forcefully, and um, that now it's common for me to talk things out instead of resorting to violence or other tactics. We usually, when we're uh, alone together, we, we try to talk about the kids. We try to talk about, okay, what are the uh, different, where every kid is at, and what are the struggles they're going through. We try to talk about the family plans, okay, what do we want to do, with different things from like very uh, regular stuff, like, hey, uh, let's try to get this new dining room, let's try to get, uh, what about buying a house, what are the plans? And as well as we, we also try to talk about us, like how are we doing, how are you doing, etc. Um, yeah, so basically we try to do that. Yeah. <laughs> We said to have a big family is is challenging, but um, I'm sure that it is um, as hard as to raise a small family, yeah. because as we mentioned, when you have one or two or three kids, they demand a lot of you because they want you to play with them, they want you to be there with them, because they need you, they need somebody to be physically with them. When you have a big family, as Arturo said, there's a lot of people around that they can can be there with your kids and if they are siblings, they have a lot of fun in between them. So uh, 
I will tell you, don't, don't be afraid. Uh, God is always there. He has been helping us all the time with our kids. Uh, in all, all, all the all, all the times in in every situation, mm. and a tip is just trust in God. Just believe when when people uh, ask us, like some friends of mine, when you, when they ask me, like why why you decide to have big kids or why you have big, a lot of kids, a lot of kids, I used to answer them like we have a lot of kids because we have faith, because we believe in God, and when you believe that God said, I'm not going to to let you down, uh, and you trust in that, you are able to have the big family because you are trusting Him. So what is a tip? Just trust in God, have faith, and you will be able to, to manage a big family with no problem. I cannot imagine my life or our life uh, without as many kids that we have. I cannot even picture my life with thinking of each one of them, the things that we have lived, and there's just so many joyful moments. We are the Rojas Diaz family, and we are joyfully made!